What's up tribe? How you guys doing? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I hope you like this video. This is The Real Housewives of Dubai Season 1 Episode 10. The, I know this episode is late, but we're going to get caught up and we're going to be done with this, okay? Um, But we start this episode off, we find out that the ladies are getting ready to take them a girl's trip, a.k.a. a hen trip, down to Nori Island, I believe, which is in the UAE. It's about, I think they said it's like 50, 60 miles outside of Dubai. Um, And um, Caroline asks is sort of hosting the trip. She invited the ladies. No husbands, no kids, and Sergio is not here for it, okay? Sergio is begging to come. He wants to come. He don't want to be away from her. And she said, you know, this isn't something that I'm used to, but it's a good problem to have. I mean, my husband wants to be around me all day, every day, but he going to need to give me some space, okay? I told him that I'm when it's time to spend time with the girls, and I got to spend time with the girls, and that is what it is. Now, Sarah and Caroline Brooks go out. And they go out dune buggy and out in the desert, you know. And honestly, I feel like this was an opportunity for them to further clear the air about what really went down with them. And for Caroline Brooks to give some perspective on why she sort of snapped and why everything is so sensitive. Not sensitive, because I don't think she was being sensitive about her child. I think the way she chose to express it was a lot. Um, but she explained, you know, that, listen... With her marriage with her husband, she walked away with nothing. How, you know, how with her son, he's her everything, he's her world, and she just doesn't like her parenting coming into question. Um, she doesn't come right out, but I feel like she alludes to the the marriage being abusive. Maybe not physically, maybe emotionally or verbally, but... I just feel like it wasn't a good a good time. And she said, you know, she walked away from everything with nothing. You know, she didn't walk away from her marriage with a big settlement. And she lets us know that even later on in the episode, the ladies are playing two truths and a lie. And one of her one of her truths that she told was, I left my marriage, you know, with I mean one of her lies she told was I left my marriage with a big settlement. Of course, it's the opposite. She left with nothing. Um so they had a good, I feel like they had a good opportunity to talk and, and just, like I said, just clear the air. Um, so they both understand where they're coming from. And so hopefully they won't go down that road again because they really do like each other. So the ladies um, are headed down to Nori Island and they are headed in style. Okay. They are in, you know, matching Rolls Royce trucks where well, they all had different colors, but they're in Rolls Royce trucks on their way to the boat, to the dock. And then, of course, they take the boat. The boat takes them right up to their house. And, of course, it is a beautiful, beautiful home. Um, and as they're going through the house to figure out what room is which, Sarah immediately takes the worst room. She said, listen, I ain't about to sit here and argue with these people over no room. I already knew that it was going to be an issue. So before it became an issue, I just went on and took the worst room. Um, it was the room with, like, the kids' room with the bunk beds, okay? Um... Caroline S. is sharing a room with um, Nina. And I think Chanel, Brooks, and Lisa, I think they all have rooms to themselves. But anyway, they got to arguing, child. And Sarah was like, are we really arguing? Like, we, like why are we arguing? Because Chanel and Brooks got to arguing. And they are just king, 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 and it's they argue over just nonsense. And Sarah's thing was, look, I took the worst room, so we wouldn't argue over rooms. And here we are arguing, like it is so ridiculous. But I feel like Chanel and Caroline Brooks just like to argue. Like I feel like they just they just like to argue with each other, child. They're arguing over who is better friends with with Lisa. And Chanel is like, but she's my friend. She's my friend more than she's your friend. And Caroline was like, no, she's not. Girl, whatever. And then Caroline had made a comment about Chanel's kissing her, you know, kissing Lisa. Asking about like, your, your tongue is up her ass. And so later on when they're making up, she said, well, you know, you really upset me when you said that my tongue was up her butt. My tongue has never been up anybody's butt. Lisa was like, girl, I didn't, I didn't mean it literally. I feel like a lot of the arguments that Chanel gets into is because Chanel doesn't understand what people are saying or Chanel doesn't understand 
funny or satire or sarcasm. She takes everything literal until she gets upset because later on in the episode, she gets upset. So the ladies are getting ready for dinner. It's a Lebanese-style dinner. Um, and everybody gets dressed up for dinner except for um, Caroline B. I mean, Caroline S. and Nina. They put on their pajamas to show up for dinner. Now, the dinner is inside of the house. So, I mean, I guess you could wear your pajamas. And so, um, Sarah comes out and sees them in their pajamas. And she's like, well, shoot. If y'all in y'all pajamas, I'm going to go put my pajamas on, too. So they go put their pajamas on child. So they having dinner. And so during dinner, they basically were just talking about Stanberry and her husband and how they met and how it was really only supposed to be like a one night stand type situation that turned into a whole situation situation. Um, but they're having a good time. And, and then um, because they were having a Lebanese style dinner, um, they had real Lebanese dancers come out and teach them a traditional um dance and so they had a good time everybody was dancing and having a good time and they were having a moment so then the ladies came together to have some shots of tequila and play some games so they played never have i ever and they played two truths and a lie in my opinion nothing major was re was revealed you know um i think caroline b revealed that child she tried you know anal sex and she didn't like it um I, I don't really think nothing major else. They talked about how many well, they had a one night stand and all of that. The truth, the two truths and the lie again, I don't feel like it revealed anything. But what I can appreciate is that they were having a good time. They were laughing, they were joking, they were having a good time and they were enjoying each other's company. Like I feel like they were. But once again, you know, we did have a moment where again, Chanel, you know, was very literal. And she didn't get it. It went right over her head. And again, I think that's where a lot of her frustration comes in when there are things that she just doesn't get. So the next morning, the ladies are getting up for breakfast. And shout out to Chanel and I. She had her glam and her glam was using Juvia's Place products. I absolutely love Juvia's Place makeup and it is black owned. And I think their colors, their eye palettes, their makeup is just absolutely gorgeous. But while she's in glam, you know, we see everybody calling their family, their churn and all that good stuff, um, checking in kind of thing. So the ladies have breakfast and they find out that they're going to be going to a, um, like a private beach for the day. Um, and, and Lisa talks about, they, Chanel was saying she had a hard time sleeping because she thought it was like a, a spirit out for outside of her door. Like in the Muslim culture, it's like a, like a spirit outside of her door. And Lisa Stansberry, I mean, sorry, Lisa was saying how she feels like when her brother was killed, um, he was killed by a friend and the police couldn't find the friend. And she said she was having these dreams and she felt like her brother was coming to her in the dreams. And she said, I helped solve his murder because he was giving me information in my dreams and I was passing that information on to the authorities and it helped capture my brother's killer. Um, she said even her husband thought she was crazy. Her husband thought she was crazy, but like it absolutely positively was what it was. Um, then the ladies go off to the private beach. Now they're riding bikes over to the private beach, which I thought was funny that they rode them bikes over there. I bet you they didn't ride them bikes back the way they was drinking and taking shots down to the beach. Child, they even made Nina take a shot. Nina ain't no big drinker, but they had Nina drinking, child. Now... Um, Caroline B made a comment about being able to ride a bike. Talking about some, I'm American, baby. We ride bikes. Girl, everybody in America don't ride no bikes. Stop it. Like, don't be trying to make people feel bad about being able to ride a bike or not be able to ride a bike. But anyway, it might not be. That ain't a big deal. It's just something I picked up, child. So then, um, they get to the beach and they have like this artificial like wave thing where you can do the boogie boards or you can do the surf. Um, and of course, when you fall, the force of the water pushes you to the back. And Caroline Stansberry thinks it's absolutely hilarious. She said, this is like, sort of like my revenge without being, without my revenge. It's like that Brit humor. Like, I'm going to enjoy watching y'all fall and be bounced around by the water all day. Like, I'm going to enjoy it. But she did get in the water herself. Now, Nina and Chanel did not. Chanel said that she is definitely afraid of water. 
she said maybe in a former life she drowned and maybe that's what it is but she is absolutely and she said they tried to talk her into getting in the water but she just she she ain't do it child she couldn't do it but the ladies had a good time once again we had a good time right the ladies go back they're getting ready for dinner and at the dinner is where things sort of go left um at the dinner they get to talking about basically being independent and not relying on a man and having your own. And again, Caroline B talks about the fact that, you know, she, that's what she had to be because of the way things went in her marriage and she walked away with nothing. And, you know, Caroline S talked about the same thing, like, you know, just being, being able to be independent. And so Chanel was saying how she was like, I, I rely on my, my husband and I'm okay with that. Like, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And Caroline S. was trying to explain to her, basically what Caroline S. was trying to tell her is that's great that you have a good marriage and your husband takes care of you, but God bless the child that's got his own. That's what she was really trying to say. And Chanel immediately got offended because I think she took offense because Caroline said, what is your business? And Chanel's thing is, I am my business. Like I'm a model, I'm a supermodel, I am my business. But Caroline wasn't trying to offend her. And I don't think, and that, and this, and that is, yeah, I know I've been on Caroline when I thought she was wrong. But in this one, I don't think Caroline was wrong. I don't think Caroline said anything wrong. I think she was trying to get Chanel to understand what she was saying wasn't, and that she wasn't judging her. And she wasn't saying she was doing anything wrong. But she was just saying, listen, there's a difference between being what did she say? Being independent and being something. And she was just trying to get her to understand it. Like, listen, it ain't nothing wrong with a husband who takes care of you and a husband who pays your bills and a husband who treats you good. But basically keep a bird in the hand and two in the bush. And she was so upset and so offended that she just wouldn't stop talking. And she just kept going on and on and on. And they were like, Caroline... To her credit, Caroline S. was being very patient with her. And she was like, but you got to let me talk. Chanel, that's not what I said. Chanel, I'm sorry if you got offended by what I said, but that's not what I said. You're taking it the wrong way. And she just wouldn't stop. She wouldn't until finally Caroline S. was like, you've got to shut up and let me talk. Like, you've got to let me talk. Child, that's pretty much where the episode ended. I guess we're going to pick up next week with the second half of this conversation. Well, not next week because I'm behind, but the next episode. Anyway, let me know what y'all think. I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.